Hi guys, uh, today I'm planning to uh, visit one exhibition in uh, Dusseldorf. It's called Medica. It's a uh, um, uh, medical exhibition with lots of companies coming from around the world. So I'm planning just to pay a visit today. I think it's uh, uh, it's uh, actually uh, it's possible to um, visit as many as um, uh, companies active in the field of medical. So today, uh, please join me and we will take a look inside and see uh, what's going on uh, in this uh, exhibition. Honestly, I'm really happy that again the uh, exhibitions are open and people are participating. This is uh, really, I was looking forward to participate in this uh, um, exhibition. And now you see that uh, lots of people actually are coming and uh, participating. More specifically, focusing this time on um, uh, diagnosis. In fact, uh, companies that are uh, manufacturing um, uh, devices for diagnosis from ultrasound to MRI, CT scan or um, radiation. Um, so I will probably pay a visit to this type of companies. But if there is anything interesting also I will uh, take a look. So uh, this is the plan for the whole uh, exhibition. So I entered from basically uh, the north uh, door. So um, the main um, companies are mainly located in this hall, number 10, the companies that I'm interested to look, number 9, number 11, and eventually number 15 and 16. So these are our main uh, focus today. I think this will give us a very nice view of, our, of the Medica and uh, the participant here. As you see, it's very big and uh, really luxurious, I would say, uh, exhibition. So this was the hall number 17 and I see more uh, companies are producing beds, patient beds, which is also nice because it, it can give me some hints and uh, tips for our uh, patient bed as well. The rise of a robotic platform that could uh, move around and disinfect the area uh, was quite obvious. Uh, there were several companies that were working and uh, for example this one was a Danish company so called uh, Audite. I think uh, it was uh, moving around and using the UV light disinfecting the area was quite uh, intelligent to avoid and collide with the objects around itself. So another company that was producing uh, mobile uh, disinfector robots was so-called City Robots from Poland. Uh, their robots could, as you see, uh, they are equipped with UV lamps and they could use AI and camera detection, face recognition, turn off the UVs when the human is around and could uh, navigate through the indoors and find the uh, optimal route for their disinfection. They could even work when there are uh, tables or anything around. Also Medica was a medical exhibition, but I saw a lot of uh, robot uh, companies as well. For example, this uh, Russian uh, robotic uh, humanoid robots were made by Promo Bot Company. Uh, it was a humanoid robot. It was it could talk with you, but honestly, I didn't find so smart. Uh, but the gesture about the robot was quite real and the face. So yeah, I thought to show it. A very famous company, so called Kuka, which is uh, in fact in producing. Uh, Industrial arms is also in Medica. So this year they have a pavilion and they have a stand. And I'm gonna show you how it looks like. 
Well, basically, as you see, they have um, quite uh, white, as, as they have changed the... Usually, it's orange, but this one is actually white. And I think it's a kind of cobalt, which can be used for operation. And, um, yeah, so um, it looks really fancy. And uh, I'm really impressed with the, with the design of the arm. I think it's very similar to Cyber Knife, uh, a, a robotic arm that is kind of like equipped with kind of radiation. So it's a kind of trying to uh, focus the radiation on a, speci a specific part of the tissue. The rise of Kobos was quite obvious. For example, this company from München in Germany uh, and the robot uh, called, is called uh, Rumble. And it's a Kobo, it's, it was made by 3D printer. And as you see, it's easy, easily, it was easily programmable. You could uh, program the robots to pick and place the uh, glasses and fill, fill it under the uh, coffee machine and again, put it back. And in comparing with the competitors, this, this one was quite cheap and was easy to be made and um, very easy to program. So it could be interesting for people to have one actually at home. One of the other cool projects that I saw in this exhibition was from Exo Atlet company from Russia, but they are based in Luxembourg. It's exo exoskeleton robot that the paralyzed or handicapped person can wear that and it can move the uh, legs externally uh, through the uh, servo. Uh, but uh, the control can be done by remotely, by tablet or by joystick control or even by brain uh, pulses, or let's say from neuron. So they have also done that. <laughs> Take some time, but I guess. Yeah, it's usually if you have some practice and not do it yourself, yeah. also under one minute. Yeah. So to start therapy quite quick. Yeah. yeah, cool. And then you can see the effect on the dis display. Yeah, so uh, you, you may work also with patients and often hear something like I'm useless or there's no movement at all. And so. With this gamified software yes. and the biofeedback, they can see, hey, there's still movement and we can still use it. Yes. And we, we are not useless and they also get motivated a lot from it. Yes. So the clue is now, even with the little movement I have, it shows me a full movement. Yes. You see an indicator, a visual one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hurry up because it's a long one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now this is combinatory. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So it, it okay. contains a lot of uh, movement. Uh, yeah. So basically, um, you have combinatory tasks. You have only one movement, or you can combine even all all three movements yeah. in certain tasks. Uh, one product that actually got my attention was from a Russian company, uh, and the product name is Ice Queen. And this uh, product can provide the uh, condition uh, that person can get ready for extreme sport. It can really low, lower the temperature and uh, lower the temperature of your body and uh, tries to uh, make uh, your body much more relaxed at a lower temperature. So you can easily go get inside of this capsule and it can provide you the ultimate uh, condition that you need your body needs to get better strength for cold weather so i kind of like see as a substitute for cold icing or swimming in ice and i personally really liked it as actually it's kind of probes i think it's an american company and as you see this probe uh, can use for detection of the cancer cells specifically in area that is not uh, really visible for the surgeon but it's a very handy tool the surgeon can uh, use this probe to detect if the tissues are kind of like get uh, uh, infected with the tumor or cancer cells or not and this uh, will kind of alarm uh, through this panel if the, the rate of the 
uh, cancer cells is higher at that specific tissue. In this scene, you uh, get an idea of how easy it is to equip an empty medical facility. So, just think of an architect, medical staff, or even the manufacturer of these medical equipment. They can come together in a multiplayer session, they can meet each other, they can see each other, and they in, can equip these rooms within seconds. And it's not just picking objects out of these um, digital product catalogs, it's also configuring them. You can see it right now with this little table. I just place this table and then I can click on it to configure it to choose what shall lay on this table. Wow. And as easy as it is with this table, you can modify and equip everything in this room. So we have a brilliant planning, consultation and sales instrument. And after this room has entirely been equipped it, mm -hmm. you simply put uh, click on a button and it, then you get an overview of what you have been, what you've placed and how much it costs. Oh, it, it's it's like not only uh, like um, graphical things, it yeah. also, also gives information about the component. Absolutely. Information, uh, I can uh, show uh, some, um, just make it, just to give me a moment, sorry. Uh, here, for example, you have a small overview, yeah. not that many details, but in this case, you see some technical data about this patient monitor that has been clicked on a few seconds before. So you see, for example, the price, the article number, the reference, the reference you get a small um, preview of this object, and all these informations are um, combined or um, referenced to this product itself. And so, as you said, we have a kind of a configurator for getting a financial overview after everything has been equipped. At the end, I took a look uh, for the companies producing uh, products for a diagnosis. And this was one of them you know, making uh, ultrasound uh, devices for a diagnosis. And uh, I kind of like, like it because uh, it's portable and it's easy. Uh, for the medical uh, diagnosis and uh, it was fast set up uh, and uh, you just need a gel to rub on the patient body and just uh, using the prop to uh, check if there is anything abnormal in the in the body but uh, the, the problem is that uh, when these these 2D devices they cannot go so deep inside and you it, there is always a limitation uh, but uh, from the quality point of view Vitacon was uh, one of the good ones in the market uh, one of the stand that I could visit uh, belongs to the X3 systems um, as you see, uh, the machine could rotate and also could uh, move vertically. They had also the option uh, to, uh, according to the organ that they need to be scanned, to be programmed. And the user interface was much, much easier than the old versions. Another one, as you see here, is the uh, mobile version of that uh, company. Um, that uh, it uh, gives the flexibility to move to other places and or without problem. Um, so yeah, this is another company active in the X-ray systems, and yeah, they had also this rotary uh, option, uh, standalone option, and the bed option, which uh, it depends really on. Uh, what organ you need to do uh, medical imaging and uh, usually the physician should decide about that but the range of products here was also quite uh, inspiring and uh, you could you could see that there is a lot of uh, options available as long as uh, the manual digital uh, version for medical imaging uh, with uh, X-rays. Uh, curious about this one. So, um, kind of like I have no really experience about this, but you can like keep the uh, infants in a pro proper condition for 
um, how long, like, like how how long it it needs to be uh, in such a uh, cell? Actually, it's, it depends on uh, the decision of the doctors. Yeah. But uh, an infant normally can uh, keep in the incubator around uh, one week or two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and we can control the humidity, uh, the weight, uh, the air, skin, air and skin temperature. And actually this uh, model of our project is a little bit old because we uh, bring, uh, brought it here around five years ago. But our new product, we can control the apnea alarm, uh, the pulse oximeter, uh, and uh, actually the, the, the red blood uh, and the pressure of the infant. Uh, actually, uh, this product can really help to infant to the life uh, for really dangerous two weeks uh, yeah. uh, after 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 the birth. birth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, this was uh, the last uh, hall that I could uh, visit, and I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, let's see. Actually, my feeling was that this year uh, the exhibition was not so crowded like before. Which it makes sense because of the COVID, uh, a lot of companies decided not to participate, or many people could not uh, come as a visitor to pay visits. But still, the quality of the exhibition was all right, was good, uh, and I could uh, see a lot of uh, innovative uh, devices in medical field. I hope you as well have enjoyed it. And I try to post everything on my podcast soon. Yeah, take care then. Ciao.